flatware. Uh, there was no no sterling, and nothing uh, nothing really to teach. You know, there is a one little thing there that I could mention if I can get that to show up in the camera. And that is that there's several of these spoons in there that have uh, markings on them that one might normally think at first are silver hallmarks and, and they do look very much like silver hall, hallmarks but by the color of the piece in relation to the other pieces in the lot it's pretty obvious that this is not a, uh, a silver metal that it's a, uh, a nickel white brass kind of piece and, and not even worth testing because it's already turned um, yellowish uh, has some corrosion on the bowl etc and you could also bend it and get an idea of what it is you're looking at because silver sterling silver will have a very special feel and, and here, here we've got a lot of some flatware. It's marked uh, Large Rogers set. Uh, if you see Rogers, you're talking about silver plate. So can throw all that out. But uh, it's a George Rogers set. But. Uh, flatware is collectible although uh, doesn't sell for a lot all right the other piece is in there William Rogers uh, same deal on that I don't ever see any Rogers sterling I, I suspect it might e exist uh, I may have even had some but right now I can tell you that I remember having any so Rogers in general is kind of a a turn off uh, point when you're looking for sterling in uh, groups. So that's what we've got there. Just another grouping of uh, silver plate flatware. Nothing, nothing interesting. Now there's a little novelty lighter uh, gun. Novelty lighter. Those seem to do fairly well, especially if they're old ones like this one is. Um, made in Japan. Um, you know, Japan as a as a marking on an import item, uh, you're normally going to be talking 1960 or older, uh, maybe late 60s to older. And so you can sometimes date pieces on, on where they came from. Germany is the same way. Um, if you see something marked Germany, you're probably talking pre-1950 uh, or perhaps even older because, you know, after World War II, uh, things began to be marked uh, West Germany and then we no longer see anything coming out of East Germany. Uh, here's a little Zebco 40th anniversary pieces. Now, if you had several Zebco pieces or fishing related, you know, fishing, sporting uh, is a, a great collectible category and um, Zebco, believe it or not, is, is a somewhat collectible name in that category. Uh, this is uh, made in 1989, so uh, 99, 2009, I mean this thing's getting uh, some pretty significant age on it as a uh, belt buckle that is in perfect condition. It says here it's a limited edition. I'm not sure if that's going to mean a lot, but uh, you know, when you put this in a, a group of uh, fishing, sporting goods, uh, collectibles, uh, throw it with an antique uh, Zebco reel or two, uh, or just stick it in with a, a bunch of buckles, uh, you know, that would be your decision to make. And might have a bearing on uh, <clears throat> what was realized. Here's some 
old Ronson uh, view lighters. Uh, a lot of times these have advertising in them. Um, Indy 500 advertising there. Uh, 19 looks like 1970s era Indy car. Uh, CB related. Uh, just collectible there. Truckers and such. Uh, another example of uh, miscellaneous lighters and uh, miscellaneous advertising. There's the Indianapolis Motor Speedway on the other side of that. And there again, you'd have a decision to make. You have a lot of Indy 500 collectibles you can throw that with, or you just throw it with a, a group of, of lighters or what. Uh, here's a Schlitz beer uh, buckle. Uh, I notice it's missing the the ring here on the back of it, uh, so you know you'll want to mention things like that if you sell it, so you avoid problems after the fact. Uh, Rolling Stones, uh, 1978 uh, belt buckle. And there again, you know, do you put that in your rock memorabilia lot, or do you put in a lot of buckles? Uh, probably either one would be fine. Jack Daniel, uh, etc. And, and normally, I might have said, uh, you know, you could have any number of buckles in, in your group. I, I try not to make groups too huge, like, you know, say 50 uh, belt buckles in one lot, because then it's hard to cover uh, a lot of detail in your title line. Uh, telling about what it is you're selling uh, without them going to a lot of further investigation on your um, your description copy and pictures etc so I, I found that I, I realize a, a larger return when I'm allowed to fit most of my descriptive uh, collectible category information in the title line without leaving out a bunch of uh, you know keywords that uh, might affect the, the sale of what something went for. Jack Daniels, the old bull. Now this buckle here looks like it might have some silver content, but I turn it over and obviously is it does not because it does not say anything about it. And, and you know whoever had this buckle made if it were silver uh, you know, everybody would want to tout the fact that it was a silver belt buckle uh, you could also tell by bending it by uh, smelling it by observing uh, other wear spots etc at last resort I suppose you could Taste it, but I don't think you would need to go to that extent. Uh, golf related collectible. Uh, golf is a really a, a great collectible category to uh, to buy and sell stuff in because uh, you know golf players uh, are higher income and and more likely to be. Uh, collecting uh, things associated with their sport, etc. Here's a state of Texas.